Okay, this is a preliminary video to show how diamagnetism works and maybe I will describe what I intend to use it for. This, I need to keep it away from my phone, this is a set of very strong neodymium magnets. They're super strong, a whole bunch of these little pucks I've separated two by two and if I slide them together I can get they stick and then I can snap them together like this and then I can take two more and if I'm very careful I'll put them together like that and then I can continue on then I can create a set of magnets that stick together like that and then what I will do is I will pick them up and I will lean them very sharply against this piece of wood Okay, uh, it's just a piece of wood, there's nothing on the back. Just a pillow on a piece of wood. I want it on a sharp angle, so I'm going to put it right there. Almost straight up and down. Right there. Now what I have here is nickel, dime, quarter, and penny. Now I'm just going to show you an example of what happens. This is diamagnetism. Now, as we know, let's see, I've got a cigarette lighter and I've got my leftover magnets. Okay, no question, these are magnets. Okay, no question, magnets. Obviously, dime. Nickel, quarter, penny, nothing happens. All right. Okay, so let's take the nickel first. Okay, let's put it on the magnets. Watch this. What happens? Just what we would expect. It falls like gravity. It's unaffected by the magnets. But let's take a penny. What happened? What happened? Here's the nickel. Falls. Let's put the penny back up there. Oh, interesting. How about if we take a dime and a quarter? Now a dime and a quarter, if you look on the edge, you can see a little bit of copper. So, there's copper inside of that dime. Hmm. Same thing with a quarter. Wonder why? Because the copper inside of this material, although the copper is not affected by a magnetic field directly. It's affected by a magnetic field indirectly. That's what they call diamagnetism. So in other words, if you pass copper through a magnetic field, it creates an electric current inside the copper, which creates its own magnetic field. You understand? So when copper passes, these are my magnets. This is a row of magnets. Nothing but a magnetic field. 
And if I pass this piece of copper through a magnetic field, it creates its own magnetic field which attracts itself, creating more friction. That's why it moves slow. This is the key. It moves, let me straighten it out. It moves slow because of the friction. And the friction is caused by dual magnetic fields. Because when copper, which is non-magnetic, copper is non-magnetic. And yet it's what we call diamagnetic. So when copper passes through a magnetic field, an electric current is created in the copper, and that electric current instantly causes its own magnetic field. So now we've got a magnetic field in the copper, and obviously we've got permanent magnets. So basically we're talking about two magnetic fields. And there's an attraction which causes friction, and that's why it moves so slow. Once again, here's the nickel. See how fast it moves. That's gravity. Straighten up. There's gravity. Now here's the dime. Yeah. Now this is a Susan B. Anthony silver dollar. And I didn't know this, but I just learned very recently that silver is also diamagnetic. <laughs> so there's my Susan B. Anthony. Ready? <laughs> Fell off. <laughs> Silver acts the same way as copper. It's diamagnetic. What I have here now is a one ounce maple leaf, a one ounce gold maple leaf. It is very heavy. It is one ounce of gold. So let's see what it does. See how slow? I'll compare that to side by side. This is gravity. Uh-huh. See how fast? This is gravity right here. Come on, focus. Yep, that's gravity. Now here it is on the magnets. <laughs> See how it slowed down? Oops. <laughs> That's how you know they're magnets. So, the bottom line is gold and silver are diamagnetic, just like copper. 
Now, I'll explain in a later video why that's relevant and what I'm going to use it for. So, basically, a couple of years ago, maybe about two years ago, I bought a whole bunch of these guys because I wanted to play around and create a prototype, a free energy device prototype, and I didn't want to spend a lot of money. But I did spend some money because these things are not cheap. These little guys are not cheap and they're strong as hell. And my fingers hurt just pulling them apart. But I just messing around, playing, having fun like nerds do, like kids do. I discovered by accident that the quarters, nickels, dimes would slide at different pace. And I made that slide bar that I showed you a minute ago. And I noticed that. Uh, you know, dimes and quarters and pennies, anything that had copper would slide much, much slower. And I knew why. I, I understood the properties of copper and why copper is used as wire and coils to make magnetic fields and things like that for motors, electric motors, stuff like that. But I did not know that silver and gold were also affected in the same way as copper copper silver and gold are diamagnetic and now I understand the property and now I know what to do with it and I will make a video later on showing you just what I plan to do with it but for now I'm gonna keep that a trade secret sorry okay I just can't keep a secret I like to do gold prospecting. I've been to Alaska twice. Here's some gold I got from my first Alaska trip. Not bad, a little quarter ounce there, a little bit over. Same thing here. Second Alaska trip, a little bit over a quarter ounce. It's a big, bigger bottle. Alaska gold. And here's my Georgia gold, about five grams worth of Georgia gold that I've panned and prospected. So I've got me a little sluice and the plan is to use magnets to aid in the recovery of gold. That's my plan and it works and I know it works. I've seen the property and I've just proved it. And it's called diamagnetism. You can slow the gold down, giving it more time to settle out in your sluice box. And that's what I plan to do.